Hello, hello, and thanks for joining me once again. And today we're talking about Purview once again. Now, there is a hot topic question that's been making the rounds, which is all about how much is it going to cost? So we've got this preview. We have this shiny new thing that can scan and classify all of our data. It can do lots of things to suck in lineage from various places. But what do we have to pay to get it deployed? Once it's out of preview, how much is it going to cost me? And there's been lots and lots of, uh, not scandal, lots of outraged MVPs who are going, why is it costing me money? It's it's costing all of my money. Um, and obviously that is creating a little bit of a worried buzz of people going, how much is it? How much is it going to cost? So let's have a quick dive into the costs behind it, what we're going to expect to see once it goes out of preview, and kind of where in the market they are targeting this giant classification governance tool. If this is your first time watching, do not forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, any comments, any comparisons you want to make, feel free to drop it down in the comments and let's have a look from there. So, first things first, thing I always start with if we're talking about pricing in Azure, this is the Azure pricing calculator. Now this is an absolute godsend if you're talking about things like run cost. How much is something going to cost me each month? If I spin up this Databricks with this storage and this SQL and a bit of ADF on the side, what is that bundle of things going to cost me? And the Azure Pricing Calculator, if you don't already use it, is exactly for that. It's like a giant shopping cart where you can go and say, I would like a key vault and a VPN and some other stuff. And you build up this basket of things in your solution, tweak all the dials for how big they should be, and it'll tell you how much it costs per month. Perfect. So let's have a look at what that's going to be per... Oh, nothing there. So the prices are not yet built into the pricing calculator. So you can't currently just go and have a look and see what it costs. That might be a little sign of things to come. So there's no current available pricing info straight through there. However, with every single product, there is this associated pricing page. So if you're ever wondering, actually, what are the calculations? What's the base cost? What are the, the flat fees I have to pay? and it's not available in the calculator, or you don't want to use the calculator, you do have this Azure Purview Block, whatever Azure solution pricing page associated. So you can normally go to the main overview page and drill down and down and down and find pricing in there somewhere. So looking at Azure Purview pricing, what do we have? I've set to my region, I've set to pounds. I know, sorry for most of you that won't make any sense. They are the magical currency that we use over here. Um, but yeah, we can get a few bits of information. So we've got this thing called a capacity unit. We have this sense of an amount of scale that's associated with our purview box. And that costs 0.255 per capacity unit per hour. Okay. So that's kind of equivalent to a certain VM size. A lot of things in Azure are priced according to the kind of virtual machine that secretly in the background is this thing spun up running the service. And that's all managed for you. It's all hidden away, but we can kind of understand the kind of things that we're doing there. Um, and one capacity unit is equivalent to one API call per second. That's not huge. But you can kind of see, depending on the size of your business, four people putting in a request at the exact same time, four units, it's not too bad, especially this is per second. And actually, you know, they're not going to be hammering things constantly, constantly, constantly. So it kind of seems all right. The main thing is that is currently free. With caveats, which we'll get to. It's currently free. Uh, Metadata storage free in preview. We do not know how much that's going to cost when it's no longer in preview. Uh, Power BI online, the scanning of Power BI, scanning of SQL, scanning of everything else. Lots of it is free in preview. Again, not really known how much some of these things are going to cost when it's no longer in preview. Uh, so about that, 0.47, so half a pound, 50p um, per vCore hour. So per unit hour spent scanning something, and scans don't take an hour. So if you're talking about scanning things, I think you know, the, the smallest cadence that we have is a couple of times a week. That's not gonna be a huge cost. So the overhead of scanning things and keeping things up to date, even if you're spending a couple of hours scanning a week, that's a couple of pounds, not too bad, depending on how many vCores it uses, and that's not particularly clear when you set up a scan, but it doesn't seem crazy. Now, the caveats I'm talking about are in here. If we go in this thing, with the preview, the preview pricing is only available in certain subscription types. 
So if you're using a straightforward pay-as-you-go subscription, if you're using a Microsoft um, Enterprise Agreement, if you've got an Azure plan, Azure and CSP, basically all of the standard normal Azure subscriptions, this preview is entirely free. Um, why there's uh, a few people complaining about it at the moment is because if it's a MVP account, if it's a sponsored account, if it's if Microsoft has spun up, a, I think, a student account, um, that is not currently covered by the preview pricing. So if you are using a... Uh, like a demo sponsored kind of paid for account to do some early trials to do that kind of thing or if you're using an education account be a little bit careful the preview pricing might not apply to you so other than that it's it's fairly fair and the kind of the preview pricing is all up there so that kind of gives us a rough okay 255 per hour plus maybe some other scanning things that we don't really know yet because we don't really can't really do much about um, and then other bits and pieces to do with uh, the catalog. So the associated catalog, when you're going through it, how much is that going to cost? Free and preview? Not, not free otherwise, but we don't know. Uh, and that, that's the main bit of info we have. So you can go in there and dig out and understand what is that uh, capacity unit? How do these things work? A lot of these things are talking about the questions people have been asking about the preview, not really answering the what about when it runs in the real world. Okay, so... That's kind of all the information we've got so far. We can extrapolate from this, right? Now, so 0 0.255 per capacity unit per hour. And if we just dive quickly into the portal, I'm just gonna grab that up separately. Um, we can kind of sort of start to understand a little bit about uh, the costing that's gonna be associated. Let's just bring this back in. So if I bring in purview, let me say, I wanna go, I've got my purview currently. Uh, I wanna create a new one. Uh, and I can give it some stuff. Let's create a new one, just test. I'm just going to create some garbage for now. Uh, give it a load of stuff. Okay, and then we can go into config. Now, we have this. This is our option. What is your platform size? Is it four units or 16? That's it. We don't have a big slider. We don't have any kind of things that we can tweak. We literally just have, do you want four capacity units or 16? So when we're talking about you know, these capacity units and how much it costs, we have a choice of four of those per hour or 16 of those per hour. So it kind of feels a little bit weird that we only have pricing on per one capacity unit per hour when actually the minimum that we can get is either four or 16 of these things. And kind of the four is kind of sh looks to be the dev test trial kind of size and 16 is the recommended. So what does that mean? Uh, so we can get out our little calculator and we can say, okay, so let's let's take that and do 0.255. That's per hour. We've got to have at least four of them. So it's going to be a pound, you know, kind of uh, for me in terms of the hourly cost. So we say, well, okay, well, let's times that by 24. It's going to cost me 96 pounds a day. No, that doesn't make any sense. Let's try that again. 0.255 times four times 24. Better. Okay. So about 25 pounds a day. And then we say, what, roughly 30 days a month, going to cost about £730 a month. Just for the capacity unit, just for this one, like these four capacity units that are always turned on. And that looks to be the minimum cost that we're going for. So that's kind of like the, the point where you say, okay, is this the tool for me? And for a hell of a lot of people, yes, absolutely, this will be the tool. But I think that's what shocked a lot of people. I think people are quite used to Azure Data Catalog, the, the original OG, and going, well, that's really cheap. It doesn't really cost anything. It's, no one really cares what price it is. Suddenly for Purview, we're saying, you know, going to cost you the best part of a thousand pounds a month to run this thing. With all those other bits and pieces in here that we've got that are free and preview for the metadata storage, free and preview for the other types of scanners, um, free and preview for the, the catalog front end searchable elements, just to run the thing is costing £734 per month. I mean, just to kind of give you an idea of how that compares to other things, um, I did this quick check down here. So if we spun up AKS, so we got a Kubernetes cluster and provisioned a couple of VMs. Looking at our various VM sizes that we have, I grabbed one, one that was roughly a similar price, so 0 0.26 to per hour for that VM. And yeah, having one of those turned on, 730 hours, that's the Azure pricing one month. 
if we say I need four of those nodes, it's about the same price, right? It's about, it kind of makes sense. So, wait, well, you can't see that. <laughs> there we go. So that 763 is about what we're talking about for that similar equivalent. What we're saying is Azure Purview needs four VMs turned on permanently. And you'll pay about 750 quid a month with some scanning and other stuff on top of it. So what does that mean for us? I mean, for me, it, it just tells you about the kind of target market they're going for. So is your dead catalog with very much this super lightweight data discovery, register a few things, and it's mainly for people trying to find the data to go in and analyze it and go, what data do I have? Oh, I've got some customers. How do I query that table? Whereas it seems like the whole push for purview has not been that. It's been for the enterprise. It's been for the data governance people. It's essentially people managing things like GDPR who don't want to get sued. It's the, essentially, what's cheaper? 750 pounds a month or however many million GDPR is charging these days. You know, it is the keeping you out of jail price to be doing that enterprise-wide scanning of all your data. Now, absolutely, that price kind of prices out a lot of SMEs. If you are a, a smaller company, you don't have a massive data estate. I've worked with a lot of clients who are paying £750,000 a month for their entire data solution. So to say we're going to double that cost so that you can govern it, it's just not an option for them. Whereas loads of enterprise clients that are using, they have the whole swathe of data all across Azure, and they're really, really struggling to make sure that they are keeping up with compliance. This tool is actually a drop in the ocean and will give a huge amount of value. It's just, it's not for everybody. And that has to be kind of that when you're evaluating purview, especially in this preview mode going, can I get away with paying that amount? Do I want to pay essentially eight grand a year, 8,000 pounds a year for data governance and to have full sight of what kind of data people are using, what kind of classifications, any sensitive data, how are we using PII? how PII data flows through my system. And if you look at that cost and go, that's a price I need to pay because we can't do it currently, fine. If you look at that price and go, you know what, we don't have that much data, we can do it much cheaper than that, again, fine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a where where is it placed and who's it for question. The fact that, you know, it's, it's not particularly scalable, that you pick, I'm going to go four and I pay for four, I'm going to go 16 and pay for 16 every month forever. Um, it's not, it, it kind of feels weird because it's outside a lot of the Azure philosophy. It's outside the spin something up, stretch it, have it elastic scale, depending on how much I use it. If I don't look at it for a month, don't charge me a lot of money. Charge me for storage. Don't charge me for continuous compute. But that's very hard with preview tools. It's very hard with things like governance where it's doing proactive scanning. It's doing like some regulatory things. It has to keep up some kind of event hub so things can push events into it. So things like Data Factory, when a Data Factory runs, it's going to fire events and be sucked into purview, meaning I need an endpoint stood up, constantly watching and waiting for things to fire in. I, I get why some of the pricing is the way it is because of how they've gone about building it. I just see it, it's ruling out a lot of people. A lot of people won't be able to use this tool because they'll go, oh, that is way too expensive to actually fit into what we're trying to do. And, you know, that's, that's fine. I mean... This whole thing, you know, Azure Purview is heavily based on this like a very big tool in the center called Apache Atlas, which is a free open source tool. Um, so if this is kind of screaming at you going, this, this is too expensive for what I need, you could look at actually provisioning and managing that yourself. You'd still need to have some kind of hardware. You still have to spin up some kind of Docker container images to then sit that install on top of it. And like a lot of the Apache ecosystem, there's several different components that you need to spin out and manage and tie together so it can have all this functionality. So part of this price is the price of convenience of not having to manage all that stuff yourself. But it is what it is. That is what we currently know about. Again, loads of questions, loads of things that we don't have the answer to. Lots of free in preview that doesn't tell us what it's going to cost when it's no longer in preview. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see where it goes. But for now, I guess that's the information, you know, kind of that is how much purview costs. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be running my purview uh, account before I have to honestly shut it down. Um, but, you know, I've got a few more videos I want to make first. So, you know, bear with me next week. Um, 
And then, yeah, be interested to see what people think. Are you actually shocked by that? Is that a, oh, that is more than I thought? Or is that a, yeah, no, it seems reasonable for running an enterprise's data governance capability. If you're currently using other tools, if you're out there, you know, using Calibra and I don't know, the other ones, <laughs> how does that compare in your mind? Are you going, well, oh, actually, that's cheaper. That doesn't have a license fee. It doesn't have like other extra costs that we know about are baked into it. That is just the cost run rate. Whereas, you know, if you're using several other third party tools, maybe you're paying that license and you're paying for the kit and you're paying for the management of it. And if you bundle those together, how does that actually compare? I don't know. I'm not currently running any of those other tools. So I don't have that information. So yeah, let us know what you think. As always, do not forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions about that, any thoughts, any comments, any shocked Pikachu faces, don't forget, let us know down in the comments and we'll see you next time. Cheers.